so many things that a person needs to know about the church. It's a little bit hard to know where to start. I think we need to start, though, with the understanding that the Orthodox Church is the Church of Christ. That um, there is that continuity of faith and practice uh, from the time of the Apostles in an unbroken passing on of the faith. That this is the Church that holds on to, until today, the fullness of the experience of uh, the Christian. Uh, when people come or show an interest in the Orthodox Church, oftentimes they come first through reading. And I think it's important to let them know that when they come uh, and enter into uh, whatever jurisdiction it may be, if they're in the United States, that they're, they're coming into a, a community that is um, alive and has its own history. And, and the reasons that those people are a part of that particular community may not have very much to do with their desire to, to live the Orthodox Christian faith, uh, as it has to do with other reasons that brought them to this country. And uh, to, to be prepared to... Um, first to learn kind of the history of, of the people themselves in order to uh, be a part of that community. To live the Orthodox Christian faith, uh, we're called into community. Each person comes with their baggage, with their brokenness and their weaknesses. And they come into a community of people that are full of weaknesses and their brokenness as well. And yet this is God's plan in an inexplicable way. He brings us all together in our sins so that we can be the cure for each other. And the church is the hospital that brings us all together. And we're all there together to use the medicines and the therapies to follow the instructions of uh, the saints, of the Lord uh, himself through Holy Scripture and in, in, to live the entire life of the church together. And, and when we do that, um, when we give ourselves the time, so I would say, to be prepared to encounter a specific group of people and uh, be prepared to take time, to be patient with that particular community to, uh, so that we can um, understand a little bit more fully how we're going to serve within that community. And we'll find our place within that community. And if we find that within that one community, we found it within the entire Church of Christ of the ages. Specifically, uh, when people choose to uh, come to be catechumens here at Holy Cross, uh, I uh, often, sadly, have to tell them that the things that they're going to hear in the catechism may not be what they're necessarily seeing practiced in all cases by everyone within the community. That um, the faith that we have is that fullness, the, the fullness of the practice uh, uh, of the orthodoxy is kept intact. But how many people choose to use all of the tools that the church gives us is a whole other question. And and so I try to prepare the catechumens uh, to understand that as they go through the catechumen process, they might even hear something different from the people within the parish. And, and to, to let them know uh, not to be too scandalized if they can by that, that everyone is still on a journey. And oftentimes the cradle Orthodox person has, through the course of his life, if he hasn't continued to study a great deal and hasn't followed carefully the, the instruction uh, given through clergy and others, may have developed their own take on things and uh, may even want to introduce elements of, of uh, their own tradition or tradition with a small t that are not nearly as important when it comes to fasting, when it comes to uh, the necessity of involvement in the, in the liturgical life of the church. So I'll, I'll tell a uh, catechumen uh, that there still are people within our communities that tend to approach orthodoxy as a kind of a Chinese buffet, 
you know, or uh, a, sh uh, a, a smorgasbord where they can go and pick and choose which aspects of the life of the church that they want to be involved with. And I'll explain that it doesn't work that way. We're meant to use everything that the church gives us. And only when we use it, everything and we use it in its proper manner in relation to each other does um, the, the purpose of these um, tools, do, do we see the purpose of these tools find their fulfillment? And, and we have that experience of God's grace cleansing our heart more fully, enlightening our mind, and, and being joined to Him, being, becoming holy in and through Christ's presence in our lives. I encourage the catechumens as well uh, to travel. I encourage them to read a great deal uh, uh, apart from what I give them to read, uh, but to but to use as many opportunities as they have available within the circumstance of their life. To go on pilgrimages to monasteries, to visit other Orthodox churches, to, to acquire a more of a pan-Orthodox understanding. Uh, because there's a beauty within each uh, tradition. Each Orthodox uh, has its own uh, and unique and particular expression of the faith and certain elements of the, of the faith. But also by traveling, one, one will see a richness of, that's in the Orthodox Church uh, that may not be uh, uh, at play in their own parish. And that doesn't uh, hopefully lead to their deciding they, needed, they need to leave the parish, but rather that the, this is a supplement to their experience on the parish level. Ultimately, we're all called to serve and to blossom where we've been planted in a way. And that's the local parish. And that's with those people that God brings us in, in, into communion with uh, through the life, particularly the liturgical sacramental life of the church.